All right, we're going to look at a couple of different topics. When you have a combination of lenses, and this by a combination we mean more than one, technically you could have like an infinite number of lenses and just keep calculating and calculating, but we're just going to limit it to two lenses. And also the lens maker's equation. So we've looked at properties of lenses where we uh, we're considering the focal length based on the object and image location, but we can also find the focal length based on the actual uh, shape of the lens. So we're going to look at that. All right, so starting out, let's look at combination of lenses, which isn't too much different than doing a single lens, only you have to do it more than once. But there is one little <clears throat> additional complication we need to have. So here we typically call the first lens over here lens A and lens B. And what happens is the image from lens A becomes the object for lens B. So in this case, we have two converging lenses. If this object is imaged over here, then that image becomes the object for this one, and it will get inverted again. And your final image will be over here. So that's pretty straightforward, and our calculations would be uh, not change really. We would plug in focal length, object distance, find image distance. You do have to do a little adjustment here because what you get for your image distance here, DIA, isn't your object distance for B. You'd have to know the separation of the two lenses. In this case, if they're 80 centimeters apart, you'd have to subtract off the object image distance of A from that 80 to get your object distance for B and then you plug that into the equation assuming you know the focal length and you can find the location of your last <coughs> image. Uh, where it gets a little tricky is if you move this lens up close right here so that it's actually intercepting these rays before they converge and <clears throat> Even though it intercepts them before they converge and this image never actually occurs, we can treat it as if it did occur and then go ahead and plug in to our equation for, uh, for lens B. The, the difference here would be that the object distance, the so DOB, is now going to be negative. So we haven't seen that yet every single time. I even told you the object distances are always positive, and that's true if you have a single optical element. But now that we have a combination, this is kind of the one complication that comes into it, as well as like adjusting our distances, um, is that if our initial image, or sorry, our initial object is on the other side of this lens, on the other side of where the rays are coming in, then we would give that a negative object distance. We could still plug it into our equations and find the final location of the image. So those are kind of the two new strategies. All right, let's look at yet another um, applet for lenses. This one allows us to do combinations of lenses. So if I click on lens there and click here, by the way, here's the URL. I'll try to remember to put this in the description on YouTube. Okay, so we're going to put a couple of lenses out here. Uh, looks like I gotta click on lens every time. So there we've got two lenses, and then if we get an object, and we'll put it over here. So this is similar to what we just looked at, right? Here's the object, the first image, and the second image. And you can grab these and move them around a bit. You can grab the lenses, and if you grab here, you can change the focal length of the lens. Okay, if you pull it through, you make it a diverging lens instead of converging lens. All right, so let's put our object over there, and let's look at that situation I mentioned. So I'm going to grab this guy and move it here. So it's still showing where that first image is, but you'll notice there's no, um, <clears throat> no rays actually converging at that location. But mathematically, mathematically, you can treat it as if it did, and then this is going to focus them even quicker, and you're going to get an image right there. Okay. Uh, now you can have a combination with diverging and converging lenses. Okay, In that case, you're going to get a virtual image from this first guy. You do your first calculation and ignore that there's even a second lens here. And so you'll get your virtual image there. That becomes the object for this lens. And there's a little tiny image there. Make this a little bigger. Okay, so you can get things like this going on. You can have two diverging lenses, and then you've got a virtual image here of this virtual image there. Anyway, all kinds of things can happen. Um, 
And as I mentioned, you can have a whole bunch of lenses doing all kinds of crazy things. We're not going to solve problems like this because it would just be a little laborious, but you could in principle if you were into that kind of thing. All right, so that's the first topic is combinations of lenses. Let's look at the second topic, which is the lens maker equation. Here it is in all its glory. So this takes into account three things. The, uh, the radius of curvature of each of these surfaces. So this one is curved more, which actually means it has a smaller radius of curvature because it would make a tighter circle than this inner surface here. That would make a larger circle. So in our equation, you plug in each of the radii of curvature. Uh, the other thing you have to plug in is the index of refraction of the material because if you have a glass lens versus some type of plastic lens that's going to change how much the rays refract and that's going to change uh, the optical properties essentially the focal length of the lens depends on that as well and uh, I mean it's pretty straightforward you'll be given three of these four variables between Fn and the two radii of curvature and you'll need to solve for the other so it'll be a bit of algebra sometimes if you have to get one of these R's out of there or something like that but and I have a little demo for this equation as well it's not actually a web page it's what's called a CDF I don't know if you guys have seen these before Wolfram from Wolfram Alpha and Mathematica and whatnot has a CDF player it's a free download it's like 500 megs though it's kind of big um, but there's a whole bunch of different uh, documents with uh, that are like adjustable. It's like the next generation of PDFs. Anyway, we have all our variables here from our equation, and we notice we can change the radius of curvature of one of the surfaces or the other, and see how that affects our focal length. And we can also change the index of refraction. If you remember the equation, it was one over f equals quantity n minus one times quantity 1 over r plus 1 over r. So as n increases, ah, stop that, as n increases our focal length will actually decrease and vice versa. Okay, this also has the thickness which is not in our equation and you'll notice that changing the thickness of the lens does affect the focal length a little bit but not very dramatically. So that's why we always call these thin lenses. We say, oh, they're thin enough we can ignore the thickness. So there you have it.